Hello, I'm the soon to be homeless William Osman here today about to burn my house down thanks to some user suggestions where they uh, want me to do a thousand degree knife versus the laser and I, I'm going to push that a little bit farther than I think they uh, are expecting. Grab my oxytocin torch from my parents house I bought like six years ago. But we got to make some room to put it in my junk and the problem is I got a lot of junk in my trunk. Garbage disposal, a record player, an old printer. Gotta drive slow because there's a bomb in the back seat. Laser beams can't melt steel beams. Well, at least not this specific CO2 laser tube. The wavelength produced is really readily reflected by the uh, most metals, especially aluminum. Now, if the metal is red hot, I think there's a chance we can cut through it because the surface properties, it might actually reflect less. I'm not like a materials expert or anything. The material already has a lot of energy in it. And so if the laser can just put a little bit more, it might be able to cut through. Or the third test, instead of using compressed air, we'll inject oxygen into the cutting area, which might help by actually burning the metal. Since we very recently moved the laser cutter, I'm gonna make sure the mirrors are still aligned. Any slight misalignment will uh, cause the beam to deflect at an angle we don't want. More, more right, mostly. Did that go through? It sounded like it went through. Oh, I see air coming through, sparks coming through. Putting some aluminum foil underneath the cutting area because the aluminum is really reflective and if the uh, beam stays in one spot too long, it will burn the uh, bottom because it is wood. If you can see stuff coming out the base, it's definitely made it through. It's just a really, really tiny hole. So I guess we should heat it up now. <laughs> this is gonna be fun. All right, before this cools down too much, Well, crap. I really don't want to bring the torch in here. I'm not completely against it. We need more hands. Chelsea! The problem is this thing cools down really quickly, and so someone has to like take the torch from me, but I can't turn the torch off very quickly. I just need someone to hold the torch once I'm done heating it up. What do I do? It's okay. I don't know what to do. Why do I do this? I don't know what to do. <laughs> One. Both of them. God. You turn them both like a bottle cap. But he was making it work. Was that fun? No. Maybe you could have told me that. Oh, what? Do you feel cool? No. I don't know how we can get this thing before it starts like melting. Yeah, it's starting to melt already. Man, this is gonna be harder than I thought. It cools way too quickly. Thermocouple on this cheap Harbor Freight multimeter says it can go up to a thousand degrees. Hmm. Seven, eight. Oh, look, it's on fire. The freaking thermocouples. I felt like 800. <laughs> That's fun. Yay. It's like creaking. So I don't think our tests are conclusive that heating it up actually helps or not. It didn't really seem to, but then again, the big problem was just keeping the knife hot enough while trying to cut it. It cooled down so quickly that I don't, I, I think let's just skip straight to the uh, oxygen assist. The idea is we're going to take the oxygen tank and we're going to pipe that gas into the nozzle, which is going to spray out into the cut and the oxygen will burn the metal. That's how a lot of, uh, actually how that cutting head works. But when the metal is hot enough and you dump oxygen onto it, it will actually react with the metal and burn it. I think that's how that works. <laughs> I might be wrong. So the reason oxygen is so scary is because it makes things that don't normally burn, burn and burn really well. So here's a piece of vinyl tube. Like you, you might be able to get it on fire, but welding nozzle in and then turn on some oxygen. And it burns incredibly well. Yeah, oxygen's pretty scary. What's going to happen right now is we're going to take a piece of vinyl tube, that flammable stuff, hook it up to the nozzle and disconnect this vinyl tube and pipe the oxygen into the uh, nozzle. Like there's a chance that it like lights that whole little area on fire. So I'm a little bit worried. Worst case scenario, we damage the lens or something. How much does that cost? Like 80 bucks, 50 or 80 bucks or something. That's a lot of money. Yeah. It's scary time. Oxygen's on. Is that going through? Oh, there's bubbles coming out the top. That's interesting. It's like little tiny pinholes. Maybe this is too thick. What about a cake pan? All right, oxygen's on. Three, two, one. Oh, that went right through. 
So the laser's off and it's still burning. I only pulse the laser for like maybe half a second and the oxygen keeps the metal burning. All right, we're gonna cut a battering. We're just picking random speeds, I have no idea. Oh my God, is that actually cutting through? Okay, so we need to go a little bit slower. Oh, it's gonna be a nasty cut. This is what the fire extinguisher is for. It's amazing. Seagull man. The oxygen, I think, is doing like 90% of the work. And if you sit too long, it starts just burning the rest of the metal on the edges. So like you want, I think, maybe more power that you can move quicker and keep the oxygen away from the cut. And just use the, like, the oxygen really sparingly. Maybe we're using too much oxygen. I don't know. What do you know? We uh, stopped filming halfway through and are picking it up like three days later. I'm wearing the same shirt, but it was washed this time. And still smells bad. Let's cut more batterings. It pierced and then it stopped. Oh, there it goes again. Damn, that just wrecks stuff. Oh, dear Lord. So you see what happens, like the instant, the instant the oxygen starts going, it just blows the hole out. It's like the Taco Bell experience. And then it will stop anytime it gets too cold. We need a bigger laser, like this is not possible. Like, you have to have something that can dump a ton of energy. In conclusion, myth busted, like there's no myth. It just doesn't work. Cutting cold, you can punch holes, but it takes forever. Cutting hot, you can punch holes, but it takes forever. Using oxygen, you can punch really huge holes and your parts are worthless. So there's no middle ground. Maybe with a higher power laser tube. Bye, that's it, that's all I got.